I had mentioned something like this before about uh, getting higher, going deeper, and I had mentioned about how you become overqualified for where you're at. And when that happens, it's, it's, a, it's a time of passing through from one place in God to another. And while you're going through that process, you can clearly see that you are overqualified for where you're thinking and you're feeling and where you belong. So you look up and God takes you. I can't call it a new dimension. He takes you to a, a new place. And in that place, it's higher and it's deeper. But in that place, what happens is everything changes. Everything. I'm telling you, this is, I'm telling you a true spiritual fact. Everything changes. Everything that seemed to be, thank you, Jesus, and I, oh, thank you, Lord, uh, seemed to be a certain way because of your understanding being opened, because of things uh, that have changed inside of you with him, everything does not look the same. Because now you are looking through the eyes of God at a situation, at circumstances that are totally different. Now, this is a process. We're talking about a process. And you may not have gone as far as I've gone or been where I've been. That don't matter. Each one of us have a time with God that we reach these places. And I used to, I used to look at it like this, like a level. And, and I would be just looking. And, you know, when he was teaching me about forces and demons and all of that, and after I overcome a certain stage of things, a certain understanding, and I would be like this looking. And it was a whole, some would say a whole new ball game. It was a whole new, different type of this, different type of that. It was just all oh, brand new. And the step you were going to take as you went up, you were no longer in the sense of knowing everything, understanding everything. You were no longer there. I don't know how to describe this to you, but if you've ever gone through something like this with God, you'd know what I'm talking about. And <laughs> I'm laughing because I remember being like just a little kid and and finding new discoveries and, oh, wow, you know, and being over here. Well, when you reach maturity, okay, <laughs> that, that doesn't happen to you anymore. It isn't that you're not excited. It isn't that you don't, uh, have everything that God wants you to have, but it is different and it's more mature and it's, it's exciting that God called you here, that he wants you here. And I'm not, uh, there are others that have uh, prophesied that he was going to do this tremendous change for, with me. And it's a transformation is the only way I could put it where he's going to change me from one place to another. Uh, I've been there. I've done that with God where uh, I've been right here and he transported me. That's different. That's not transforming me. But, but I've heard from other prophets that God had showed them that this was going to happen to me. Now, prophets only confirm what God's already told you. I told you that. They're not going to give you anything. They don't come to you and tell you, well, God showed me this and you should that. And you should. They don't do that. A real prophet, when he comes and tells you what God showed him, he's telling you something that God's already showed you, revealed to you, that God's already talked to you about and told you about. And he's only or she is only confirming it. And so what I should say is it's been confirmed by others that God is doing this work with me. This is a special work, and 
I believe that it is because the time, the time that we are here is, is a time unlike any other time, as you well know, but it's, it's a special work for this time. So whether I want to go to it or don't want to go to it, whether I want to be involved or I don't want to be involved, whatever I think or feel, it doesn't matter. It's happening. And I can feel it and I can, I can see it. And I, I'm not really in the place of understanding it yet. But that'll come. That comes with, thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. That comes with everything that he does with me. This is something that it's all new. I mean, wow, every bit of it is all new. And it's a, it's a place that he had, God had come to me and prophesied that he was going to take me to years ago. And like I told you, there are times where he would come and say, and tell me the prophecy, and then 20 years later, he would say, a happening, this is to fulfill this prophecy of my life. <laughs> my life has been one prophecy after another. So this is how he operates with me. I don't know about you. So understand what I'm talking about, because this is not about me. I'm talking about God doing something with his children. Each person that is in a certain place, on a certain level, where they become overqualified for where they're at, even if it's, in other words, this step is here, even if it's here, here, or here, it doesn't matter. What matters is, is he's taking you another step. You know, I, I think of Jacob's ladder, and each step took him closer to the throne. Well, there are those of you that I know live very close to God. But there are certain steps and certain things that you need to know and you need to learn. And the church itself is right now in that realm on the brink of understanding something they never understood before, on the brink of hearing something they never heard before, on the brink of seeing something they've never seen before. They are right there. Just right there in the presence of God. And you can say you're waiting, but I, I don't call it waiting. To me, wait when you wait for something, it's like turning on the water and waiting for it to boil. I, I don't go along with waiting. Because I've never lived my life with waiting. Oh, they used to say, well, you've got to wait. Well, wait for God. Well, wait on God. I never did. I always put it in its proper place. In his time, in his will, in his way. But I didn't even think of it that way. I just put it aside and said, okay, you said it. I believe it. That's, that's it. It's going to happen. But the timing of it or anything, I never, I just, whew, I don't touch because that's him. A lot of people, they wind up getting tired of waiting. And so they start putting their hands on it and they start working it out the way they want to. And I cannot tell you that I'm not like that. I cannot lie to you and say, I'm not like that. I do do that. And I've had to really repent before God. Because he'll tell me something is going to happen. Uh, I'll give you an example. An example, He'll say, I'm going to buy you a house. So don't bother to look for one because I, yeah, I have one picked up. So don't you go and try and buy one because I'm going to buy it for you. Well, at the time I had no money to buy a house. But I'm sitting there dreaming and thinking about a house. So I went out and I looked and they had a, a house right up the road from me that was being auctioned off. And, and I, I went to that house and I, uh, and I listened to, uh, what they turned down for it. They, they didn't sell it. They turned down, uh, 
$190,000 for it. Well, of course, that broke my heart, because there's no way we had $190,000. There, You know, my husband had just told me what God told me. Don't look for a house. Because his reason is we don't have the money for a house. God's reason was he already had one plan. So don't go there because God even told me you're going to break your heart. And I saw two that I really liked and would have loved to have had. But I went home with a broken heart because no door was open, no way for it to happen. So finally, I left it in his hands. I just forgot about it and said, okay, I accept this. Whatever your will is for me, Lord, I'm, I'm going to have, find joy and peace. And I did. I don't know how long after that passed, but that was when, you see, somebody had given me a golf cart. And in that golf cart, I was able to go down through the community and pray for people. And I probably reached 350 before they stopped me, before someone said, hey, this is not good. But I, <laughs> there were people that needed prayer, and I did go to their house. I can't count the amount of times God would say, knock on that door, and boy, would everything work out. Now, I can't also count to you the times that I would never walk on certain doors, knock on certain doors. You have to really know God before you could knock on a door and it turn out God to be with you. Anyway, so there I am thinking uh, how terrible it is that the houses are way too, way too expensive. And I would have loved to have a house on the water. And yet, I couldn't. So couple of doors down for with, from where they were turned down $190,000 was this double wide on the water, same block. And the man was pulling out the sign, and I think he was getting ready to put on a new one. And I just, I wasn't planning on asking him so I could sell it, but I was just curious. And I said, are you, are you, not going to sell your house. He says, oh, no, I'm, I'm still selling it. He said, I'm just changing the sign. I said, oh, okay. And he says, uh, I says, how much do you want for that house anyway? And he stood there, and right before me, you could see he's rolling his eyes, and he's thinking, and he says, $10,000. I couldn't believe my ears because this was the place that my husband used to pay to dock his boat so he could go fishing. And uh, I, I, I said, wait right here. I'll be right back. And I went into the house, told my husband about what he was asking for. And sure enough, within a half an hour, we had the paper signed. The house was ours. Now I'm trying to think to go back to a whole new level of understanding. How did I get from there to here? <laughs> because some of these testimonies, they really are phenomenal of what God had done. So, uh, you know, when you sell a house, they they go by what your neighbor paid for it. And, uh, and when you get a house for $10,000 on the water, wow. So anyway, I have the testimony in, in other in other places, but the Lord had been leading me to different levels of understanding, different things to hear his voice different ways, which I believe the church itself, the whole church right now, is on a certain level where they are overqualified for what they've been doing, and God wants to make a move with them, but he has to get their attention so that they will listen to him and pay attention. And if they can't do that on the smallest things, 
they're not going to be able to do it on the largest. And many of the people, whether they're in church or out of church, there are certain basic understandings that they do have that belong to Jesus Christ. And those certain basic understandings can lead them so much into truth that they will be able to accomplish God's will because God wants to make a move. A big one. I'm telling you, it's big. It's bigger than the world has ever seen. And it's coming. I had written a letter to a certain person in 2000, I think, 15. And I said, God wants to use you to bring about a revival across the whole world. Not just the United States, but the whole world. I'm telling you, at that time, and nobody thought this person was even reborn, let alone God use him. I mean, this was a sincere, true prophecy. <laughs> and, uh, and I wrote to him. And the reason why I wrote to him was this. And I've said this, it's not going to be like the usual revivals that you've been talking about. It's, it's not going to be because oh, so many of them went bad. So many of them fell down. So many people uh, started gathering money and started doing this. And, and, and you could see the miracles, but you could also see that it wound up bad because it was not God. God wanted to save souls. Yeah, that was God. But the part of what the people were doing that were doing that were were not right with God. And that's why they wound up in some sins. That's why they uh, were crushed under persecution, crushed under this. But you see, this move of God is not going to be crushed. This move of God is going to be so phenomenal and so great. I don't know if any of you understand, but whatever happens in Israel is connected to us. When we get a great victory, so do they. And that is because the two of us will, at one time or another, be together in heaven, okay? And because one part of it is for God the Father, the other part is God the Son. And because of the way God called me, and he took three years to work with me before I even met Jesus Christ. He proved to me beyond a shadow of a doubt that his great hand has been upon every single soul from the time they are born till the time they hear the name Jesus Christ. The angels do many mighty miracles with them. God uses them. God does it. And then suddenly Jesus Christ comes into their life. Because you see, God says, no man can come unto the Father except they come unto Jesus Christ, except the Father draw him. Now, I've heard him say, what a marvelous thing. But they don't have any understanding for it. God the Father, all of your life is drawing you to Jesus Christ. You think suddenly, you suddenly heard about him and, oh, you'd have no idea of the work and the way God had made things to lead you to accept Jesus Christ. If you did not believe that there was a God, how could you believe he had a son? If you did not believe that there was a father in heaven, how could you ever believe that he had a son? So the, the revival will bring people back to the reality that there is a God, which is a basic teaching. I teach two-year-olds. There is a God, and, it, and he's your father. If you don't know him, how can you know the son? Oh, everybody knows God the father. Uh, many people think, oh, he was mean, he was this. He, you know, that's not God the father. God the father is just like Jesus. God the Father made a sacrifice with Jesus Christ by giving up his only son. 
and yet you could look upon him, dare look upon him as a harsh, evil God. There's a lot of people that do that that don't realize what they're doing. And it is because they do not know the compassion, the love. They didn't see it. They saw it in what the relationship of what the Israelites were doing with him. They didn't see when he gave him stuff to eat and the manna to eat. They didn't see that in the wilderness. All they ever were taught and saw was the harshness of God and how he dealt with them. They didn't see how many times God the Father was so, so precious in, in pity and compassion towards them. How he forgave them over and over and over. They don't see that part. They only see the part where God says, uh, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. That, that's the part they see. They do not see God the Father as an awesome creator of all things who has a son who is an awesome creator of all things, who has a Holy Spirit who is awesome creator of all things. They do not put those three together. They do not put all of that love. They don't put it and add it to God the Father, and, and, and I can't say add it, they don't attribute it to God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. That's why he says we can call Abba Father. If you only knew and understood, you would see the revival I'm talking about. You would see how God is going to touch billions and billions of people. To be aware there is a God and he is holy. Holy is his name. There is a God that loves them so much that he gave his son. That is the first revival. That is the first thing that you want to see in a revival. You don't want to say, oh, we've got to see the miracles and we need a healing and, and that's all you've got your mind on. Oh my, no. No. It goes much deeper than that. You're going to discover a God that has always loved you, that has loved you so much from the very beginning that he gave his only son. I don't know how to get that across to you, but I am telling you, that move I'm talking about is coming. Now, there are those who would love to say that it's coming, that the Antichrist is going to do this, and the Antichrist is going to do that. <laughs> Before the Antichrist really, truly manifests himself, God's going to do a move on his church, his people. And whether they are this high or this low, whether they are out there or there, he is going to touch them all with the reality. A reality that there is a God. See, you don't know that yet. Many of you, you only know what you heard. You know what somebody told you. You know it, but you don't know the reality of him being here. That's what he's working on. That's what he's preparing. So get upset all you want that say, well, you know, uh, this doesn't belong in the Bible. That What belongs in that Bible is knowledge of God the Father's love, God the Son's love, God the Holy Spirit's love. <clears throat> if you're not patterning your life after that knowledge of experiencing that, something is wrong with you. Because that is the plan that God had from the beginning. And he showed up this way in the Old Testament to bring forth everything this way in the new. To give all of the glory to his son. But like Jesus said, all mine are thine and all thine are mine. <clears throat> How could you Believe that God wants us separate. He's going to bring us together. 
Whether you like it or not, he's going to bring us together. But I'm seeing the most phenomenal, the most powerful movement towards God that I've ever seen. And you can you can look at it and you could say, well, that's not God. The God don't do. Well, you can do whatever you want. But if you're wise, you will allow yourself to be swept up to heaven. Ah, are we talking about the rapture? Ah, is that what we're talking about? Ask yourself a question. Uh, catching away. Well, how could you have a catching away if you don't know that the God the Father is involved in it? You don't. See, many of you have had a picture of it in church. Well, God's going to come while we're worshiping. Uh, is he? Well, you go home and you live like a demon out of hell, but God bless you. It's going to be okay. Is he? I'm talking about being swept up with a power that says, I am God. Woo! That power, that's the one. It's going to sweep up every single person. And tell you, I am God. And you're going to be swept up. Oh, I hope you hear this. This is, this is brand new to me. The way God's showing it to me today is brand new to me. I knew it and understood it, but not like this. And now my eyes are beginning to open about why in 2015 he told me, the greatest revival is coming. But you see, there are people who said, oh, they were in Sarasota at the time. And they said, well, you know what? They're coming. They're coming to Florida. It's going to be the greatest revival. And they're coming to Sarasota. Because, you know, in Palmetto, which is where I live, they call it Pal Ghetto. And they, God would never go there. <laughs> oh, my goodness. God goes where the sick are. The sinners are. He doesn't go where the self-righteous are. And your God's going to come for you. <laughs> Those of you that judge and condemn. And I'm telling, I even told you the city. You judge and condemn and call yourself apostles. But... You don't even have the sense to know and understand. You've been touching God's anointing for a long time. You've been cut touching God's children and sitting down in judgment for a long time. And you need to repent. I mean repent. Because it's not the way you're saying and it's not the way you think. He's going to bypass you and you, you're going to wish to... God, you never touched another soul in judgment. You didn't get your counsels together to condemn the innocent because someone came to you and told you a lie about someone else. Oh, God, showed where, where everything. And then you destroyed people. You destroyed God's true children because some liar come along playing games with God. But, oh, you know, just like the New Age movement. Oh, I got these dreams and I got these visions. You guys, you don't even know what you're talking about. You don't know why you're all tangled up. And those of you that are tangled up with them, oh, we're, we're going to be the ones to use to save this group of people. That is so unbelievable. Because you don't even have enough to get in out of the rain and you're going to save someone else. Oh, you think you have a lot. Oh, you spent a little time with God. You think you have everything. And this is why you're not going to be there unless you repent. I'm telling it to you. Play all you want. Lie all you want. Make it however you want. Well, I got a dream last night and God showed me this, this, and this. Well, I got a, a vision and God showed me that, that, and that. And God told me, get alone. Go with God alone. Because uh, uh, separate from those who have God. Yeah, right. 